Gujarat Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Grow business. Transform Gujarat. Uh, guys, uh, I am Jamin Shah, uh, Chairman of uh, CCIIT Committee. Thanks for all coming. Um, idea behind uh, having this session, it's not a seminar, it's a workshop. That's how uh, you kept it a uh, workshop. So that uh, whatever investment uh, you or your client have made, uh, their team, or their management or their leadership can leverage that investment and they can use those uh, software and uh, have those BI and uh, dashboards created by uh, themselves so that uh, uh, they use a maximum, uh, uh, you can say, you, they can get maximum return out of their investment. Mm -hmm. right? So uh, this is not a, just a, a one uh, session which we are planning. This will be in continuation, in okay. regular interval. So, uh, and our expectation was not so high. It's, it was just 10 to 15 or max 20 people so that we can have one-to-one -one interaction. Mm -hmm. And uh, whoever like you uh, participate can get maximum advantage out of this team. Fortunately, what uh, I have done, uh, they are part of DevIT and uh, Sahib is the founder, co-founder of uh, DA Consulting and they grew uh, from uh, Baroda uh, for this session. And uh, uh, the entire team is here. Uh, and we have people uh, uh, watching from our Zoom link as well. So this particular session we are recording so that it can be uh, uh, used by all our members uh, later on as well. Okay. So I will not uh, talk too much about that. I would like to continue on the same and just thank GCCI anyway. So this is very thoughtful and it's going to be beneficial for all of us over here. So thank you so much again. And um, here it's going to be two of us, two dinner, and one is him, Nayan Dholakya. And the data scientist at the, at the consultancy, and uh, that's me, Krishna, and I'm a business scientist at the consultancy. And with, I'm just going to brief you about what we're going to do, do today. So, we've already done our introduction, so that's done. And our session for our session is going to be analytical decision making that I was speaking to you all about. And the second session will be taken by Nayan, that is data analysis uh, process and creating insight, uh, insights using Power BI. Those both sessions we're going to be taking and we're also going to do a little bit hands-on in that case. And after which we are going to have an interactive quiz so that we get to know how much we're able to deliver to you, how much that we've explained, we've understood, and how much more we can work on ourselves mm -hmm. just for you guys to understand better. And then at the end, we'll give you a chance for question answers as well. However, we also are open for you guys to ask us questions when we're discussing something. So feel free to do that as well. And um, let's just start with analytical, analytical decision making. Yeah, so as uh, like we discussed, a lot of you over here are our business owners or, the, or into business development. And we are all put in situations each and every day, day in and day out, where we have to take decisions either it's for an organization or for a particular department or for a particular issue that a department is facing. So, you know, as owners, of course, you've got that gut feeling as to what is going wrong with the company or what it is wrong with the company, but not everyone in your organization is going to be able to track back as, as easily as you guys. So in that case, it's very important that your data, that your company is gathering data uh, from its history as well as the current data that is going on in the company so that that data can be used for people working with you to take as good decisions as you guys do. So that's why we are emphasizing today on using this data to your benefit and how digitalizing this data and how using it will help us to take better decisions. So we all have seen this. This is a treasure box. 
it's used it was in in the history or now also in the movies we see that it is used to store people's assets or what is valuable to them this is one this was one source in the history mm-hmm. but as and when uh, things or our assets are getting digitalized it's no longer possible to store those assets in these treasure boxes so what the human kind has done for us is created some other kind of treasure boxes which in the form of punch cards magnetic plates movable hard disks floppy disks cd roms as we drive the usbs we've all used it and now the assets or the things that are very important to us they're storing in these these forms and now the most recent ones that all organization are talking about are shifting towards or it's a buzzword is about cloud computing or cloud storage as well as this so now it is very important to understand for uh, us that if our organization really does need cloud storage or not so <clears throat> so when do we know that we actually need cloud storage so of course as our organizations are growing and as you guys are growing there's a lot of data that you have to store either like i talked about like not just of this year or for the next 3 years but all the data from the past to the things that are going to happen in the future you have to have all the data for it to make sense or for it to have patterns so that you can take better decisions so in that whenever you have the this humongous amount of data and whenever you want to scale your organization even in the future or that's not your scope is right now it is very useful that you have a system of storage which helps you scale so with cloud storage it is very easy to scale your data as well as the other thing is that you only pay for the data you use you only pay for the storage you use so in that case it's very cost efficient as well and if you have people working from other countries other regions other states so it's very easy to collaborate with them it's very easy to give accessibility to your of your data and that to especially securely because that is again like uh, the bigger organization your organizations are getting it is equally important to keep the data secure over there so that's another very big point and also you can also keep integrating integrating with other cloud services and other platforms like salesforce and any other ERP that are using so it's very important that all the data is in sync for you so, so cloud storage is another gives an ad- advantage over there as well now when we talk about any organization for for example let's just take a manufacturing organization so in that case uh, where does a company get their data so there are there is literally data everywhere or in each and every process that a company is going through so even let's let's just say for production so whenever suppose let's say uh, i'm running a switch manufacturing company okay. so in that case my production line how my machines are working what is the downtime what is the uptime why the machine is having a downtime is it actually a manual error or is it something that the machine is 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 it is under load and it needs maintenance what are the things so you know the production line data is something that we get from there and it eventually helps you make your process faster and helps you reduce your cycles and increase the efficiency over there so also along with the production line data whenever we are doing quality control we analyze that there are these issues that commonly happen so you know there are these bottlenecks that are happening So in that case, we analyze what uh, what step should be taken so that in the next phase or in the next cycle, the quality control is going to take lesser time and we can spend more time on our production. Another than other than that, there's the supply chain data as to seeing how your entire supply chain is working, where you're finding bottleneck, working on it, again targeting it. So supply chain, also the number of customer orders that you get. or suppose this, like i said i am a uh, switch manufacturing company so i i see that i'm particularly seeing a rise in customer orders in a particular type of switches so that's also giving me a data as to which i should manufacture which switches i should manufacture more or how i should forecast my data or how i should focus the planning of my data so that's one thing again like i said maintenance and assets your financial reports and your financial data tells you a lot then your mark uh, also the competitor your competitors will also somehow tell you what kind of direction you should go in or what data is actually needed in your company for you to get in this stay in the same pace with them right so these are all these are all like the internal data uh, internal forms of data that you can get there are also a few uh, data that you can get from outside that is your customer feedback when you interact with your customers that's another data that you get 
then there's this market research that happens that your company will do. That, that's how you can get the data. And along with that, there are also systems, like you said, there are these sales systems, CRM systems, your ERPs, your uh, financial systems that can give you the data. So these are all the different types or different forms or different places where you can get that data. Now, gathering or collecting this data alone cannot really do uh, something for you, right? You need to really work on what to do with this, this data or how this data should be used. So basically, let's let's look at how the data can be used. Now, let me give you a very interesting example again, because I feel like I hope that using examples is helping you to understand, so that it doesn't get too boring for all of us. So uh, let let me take an example of a very famous company that, of course, we all know that is Coca Cola. Now, what Coca Cola did was it started a campaign in different different countries in different regions and geographical areas where they installed vending machines at, at a few locations. And then uh, they saw that, you know, what are the combinations that people are liking? What are the combinations that we should be introduced? Because other than their own research, what actually the customer wants or what the public is looking for, is this is, this is a very nice and inno innovative way to get through them. So what that actually did was they actually deduced that their cherry cola and their mango cola was the major selling product and they actually eventually even introduced that as their own product. So what, what these kind of things do or what these kind of data helps you in is that you can make better decisions. Now that they know that this product is selling, now they have a huge amount of selling of that product, even some, in some areas even more than the normal product. So that helped them take a better decision. Also, it gave them a, 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 like a sense of personalization. People felt that they were, their views were accepted, that, that what they wanted, it was being personalized for them. As well as their process improved uh, according to that, and also they could develop new products. And also, after which they could also forecast the demand that, okay, <clears throat> uh, speech, Japan is accepting this, India is not. So also they knew that, <clears throat> Excuse me. Also, they knew that this is something that we had to sell in Japan and not in India. So they could also forecast these things out of this data. And again, customer retention and performance monitoring is another very important thing that we all understand. So this is this is basically the summary of how you can use the data that you've captured from these different sources that we talked about. <clears throat> now, like uh, the initial thing that I talked about, that when you are a company owner, it is very easy for you to take a decision on the basis of your gut. But when it's people working under you or there are people handling departments, the best way for them to take these decisions or the best way for them, for their decision to be closer to yours, one of the major things that you can do is record the data, which we did, like we talked about. Then help them compare that data. When this data is compared, like we talked about, this forms a pattern for them. And whenever they're observing this pattern, they'll see that, and, and along with that, they'll have their experience, they'll apply their experience to see how they can take better or make better decisions that are going to be beneficial for your organization. Now, uh, we've been talking about data, 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 but then it's also very important to understand that, like we said, there's huge amount of data that we are going to interact with. Now, as a human, it's not very easy for us to see those data lines and just think it in and remember what's going on every time we have to take a decision. So the best way to actually analyze this data is through visualization. As humans, it is very easier for us. It is much easier for us to remember what we've seen than what we actually, uh, than what we actually just see as numbers. Because we are not, we are not computers. So computer zeros and ones are very easy to remember, and that's why those are called data. But the things that actually come to us after that, or the thing that comes to us when we visualize it, or when we actually make them in a visual format, is something that we get information out of it. Now, out of that information, you can take better decisions, which is basically knowledge, and then actions. That is, after taking those decisions, what are the right steps to? Do? So that is how basically visualizing your data is going to help. So not just seeing, like I said, just seeing that data in your Excel sheet is not going to be as beneficial as actually visualizing them in form of charts, pie charts, or line charts, and any any such form. So we are we also see an example of that. So how about 
how about you tell me that what what will the three D figures are trying to depict? Why why don't one of you just just pick up one image and tell me what it's trying to tell? Like what, what is the difference between the lines in the first image? What is the difference between the lines in the second image? Can, do you see any significant difference? Shows the progress, like uh, the top three has more progress than the fourth one. Okay. If we compare to product. Correct, correct. That, that does make sense. That does make sense. But like, I'm just speaking about visualizing how how they're different from each other. So how, how, are, how are these four lines different, different from it, right? So, like what you said also makes completely very good sense, but it also is depicting that this is in length, this is smaller than the rest of it. In width, this is higher. So basically, the only point in this was that whenever you see things, it's easier for you to dip, uh, easier for you to understand what it's trying to portray, rather than me telling you, okay, the length of this is the length of A is a larger than that length of me, how much are you going to actually remember it? But now that you've seen it, whenever you see this again, you know what it's going to depict, you know what it's going to show it. So in that case, just a small example of it. And we're also going to say, uh, like, but this is something that we already discussed, that uh, visualizing the data again, just a summary of it, it's, it helps you to communicate huge amount of data. So if it's just small data, it's easier for us to see it in a table, or to show it to our uh, employees as well. But when it's data for the past 10 years, how are you going to actually show it to your employees? Or how are you actually going to take a decision out of it? So when there's a lot of data over here, what you actually do is to communicate it better. It is better to visualize it and for them to present it to them like that. So also it also helps you identify the threads because it's just going to uh, show it like that. Also it is uh, crucial for highlighting the areas that the company needs to work on and also it drives success uh, during the service delivery innovations as well. So once you've seen what is going wrong or where the pattern is going down, you will actually see okay in this year what had gone wrong, what was different in the company, why did it go down. So those kind of analysis will actually eventually help you as well. So like we discussed about just looking at this is this at this Excel sheet, it looks a little messy because you if you're an expert in Excel of course, you'll understand, eventually you'll understand, but for a layman or for everyone in your company, I think a, a, a view like this would make more sense for them. A view like this would help them quickly understand what you're trying to show them or quickly help them to take the right decision. Now, this is just a representation of the fact that we've been telling, uh, we've been saying that you should visually, you should visualize your data. Now, it's not, it's also important to understand that which kind of data needs to be visualized in what form for us to process it in the better way. So when you're talking about, if you're talking about like a comparison, you're talking about two different things. And if it's a, if it's a category and if it's a discrete data, cryptograms are usually used. Let's just see a few examples here. So oh, these are the three comparisons between these three, and it's also discrete data. So it's easier for us to represent it like this. When we're talking, when we're comparing discrete data, we can use column charts over here. And in that case, if I go back, so whenever we're talking over a period of time, and then we say that we want to show discrete data, we can show it in a column chart. Similarly, if it's a continuous data, we can show it in line charts. I'll share this presentation for you so that it also helps you. <laughs> Whatever is your requirement, to be able to see what is the best form to represent. So just a few examples that I've taken over here is the pictogram, the column chart. So here, over the period of time, so over the period of 2017, 2016, this is the data they're showing that the number of medals that were won in the Olympics. Again, now if I'm talking about a uh, particular data, if I'm talking about this one thing, suppose I'm talking about X, right? But I'm talking about some things about it. So, like, suppose push ups and sit ups. So, these are, we're talking about the same area, but these are just different ways of representing those two things that happen at the same time. So, this is how you can uh, make a line chart out of that, that data. 
And this is a very famous one. We see the stock market day in and day out. So this is bars and discuss are one another form to be present that time you take up. And again, it's the ground as well. And because it's a continuous data, it's better to represent it in this form. Now, like we discussed, that a lot of like we might be the first thought that came to us might be that you know when Excel can do these things, when Excel can make charts for me, why do I actually go for Power BI? Like you know, why do I invest more in Power BI? So I think the main difference here between Excel and Power BI is yes, Excel is amazing and we've been using it, but the things that Power BI, BI can do, the capabilities that it has, is something that we should definitely explore. One being that, like I talked about, when you scale your company, when you have a lot of data to handle, it is difficult for Excel. It becomes slower and it is difficult for it to represent it in the best way. So whenever you're handling large data sets or whenever there's data, uh, that advanced data modeling means you're getting data from two, three different sources and you want to sync it and see it in the same dashboard, it is easier for you to see it in Power BI where Excel doesn't give you the same functionality. And of course, the visualizations and the dashboards that Power BI can give you are much better because it is it is entirely designed for this purpose. And also, it gives you real-time data analysis. It also helps you uh, in getting the advanced analytics and AI integrations. And again, like I said, you can scale very easily with Power BI, and your performance will improve. Now, uh, like we said that in an organization, there's like this hierarchy of people. There, there's your staff, there's your management, there's your leadership. So as, as and when you go up in the hierarchy of your organization, the, the kind of data that you will need is more aggregated. So if, suppose you're a business owner, right? So the kind of data you'll be needing is more about the performance, performance of your employees, what is happening in the company. Then again, if you're in the management team, then again you'll have to think. Uh, you have to see the trends, the summaries. If you're a business developer, you have to see, okay, what is the trend? What are the sales? Why are the sales coming up and down? So those are the trends that you need. But the ones on floor or the staff, they need much more detailed data. So it's just an example that the staff needs more on-screen data and reports. The manager needs needs the managerial reports and ad hoc and analysis. While you, as a business owner, might want to see the KPIs, right? So in that case, uh, let's let's jump on to the topic KPI. So KPI is basically the key performance indicator. And of course, we are all using that day in and day out. But just getting the information or just getting, uh, just knowing what your company is doing right now. Suppose you see that in the, in the past uh, six months, uh, the first five months, each and every salesperson is achieving their KPI. They are getting 15 50 uh, prospects for them each month. But you see that this particular month, the sixth month, they have, they've reached to 30. Now that's showing a downtrend. So you you want to know what's happening, right? So in that case, just seeing just seeing the data doesn't really get you or doesn't really help you know what you have to do about it. Like you wouldn't know that what should be changed and why it didn't work out, right? So KPI alone or these indicators alone cannot work for you. There's another concept called OKR, which is objectives and key results, which helps you understand why things are not working in a, a deeper form. Because here, what you do is you set an objective. You set an objective, and then you have these key results that you have planned in your head accordingly. But these key results, again, have to be measurable. Like, I'll just show you an example for it. So suppose as a manufacturing company, I decide that I want to improve uh, my production efficiency, right? So now in that case, what my key result will be here is an increased overall equipment efficiency from 75% to 85%. Now, if I only say that increased overall equipment efficiency, even if it's increased by 20% or 30%, it still means increase, but it's not going to actually help you achieve your objective over here, right? So having these measurable quantities over here, then again, like reduce the manufacturing cycle time by 15%, the 0.5% defect, you know, achieve the defect ratio of 0.5%. So these are the measurable terms that you have. 
So whenever your company is not able to do something, or whenever you see like a downfall in one of the charts, what you can do is always go back to these key results, see if they are attained, or if the measurement that you put on it is is what the company is achieving. If that's not, then it's easier for you to find the bottleneck and see where it's going wrong. So <clears throat> my only ask is that uh, rather than just relying on OKRs, you uh, or just relying on KPIs, it's very important for you as an organization to set objectives, set key results along with it, and plan things weekly to achieve these key results as well. So I think what this slide uh, basically says is that whenever you see a drop in your KPI, it means that it's signaling for you to use the OKRs. It's signaling you to see why your objective is not being achieved. So I think with that, I am going to hand over to and he's going to continue the session. If there are any questions, uh, we can discuss right now or at the end of the session. Okay. Thank you, Krishna. So, all the things have been answered by, uh, it's related to the, all the business intelligence work that how the KPI and OKR will be helping us. That, so now, but apart from this, there is again a subdomain comes inside is data analysis. That how to analyze the data, right? So let's begin with that part. The first and foremost thing which comes inside is the why is data analysis and how it is important in today. We all are saying data, 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 but what data is important for us to get to the visualization? So specifically, data analysis is nothing but First and foremost step is inspecting our data. Then we need to transform the data. Then we will be preparing the modeling of the data. And then we come up to the visualization part and the conclusion part. So why this all steps has been needed. So this will improve our to identify the trends in the today's world that how the business is working, how we are developing, what that drawbacks we are uh, all tackling day-to-day -day life or into the business in the competition. Right? So this all will be helping us in the data analysis part. Now next, what are the steps involved in this data analysis? So first and foremost step comes is the defining the question. So first and foremost thing we would suggest is that define the question and exactly what analysis you want. Does it require report of sales? Does it require the purchase report, does it require production, does it require inventory, what our focus is, and based on that, prepare a questionnaire. Now, while preparing the questionnaire, that will be our objective. Now, what should be the example then? That I want to identify that how my company is doing, how my sales is doing. If I am giving on my some of the components, I am giving some of the discount, then is my sale is going or it is difficult? that we can identify. Okay. So questionnaire will be preparing on the base of what we need to identify. Our progress related to the cell, related to the inventory management. So after defining the questions, we will start collecting the data. Now, as if we want to require of the sales data, so we will be start with the customer name. First and foremost, the customers will be necessary. Then we will be Going with the product, that which product we are getting out. So first column becomes the customer name. Second column becomes the product. Third will be that the uh, unit or the quantity, whatever the scenario will be based on that product. Third might be the number of units which relate to that. Then the unit price we will be needed. That one quantity is selling at this cost. Then the number of quantities we are selling. That how much this case has been done. Then again as some few were discussing that we are doing with the international clients and the export teams also. So with regards to that, we will be again having some currency factors, right? So in the USA, the dollar will be some other way. So that currency factor we need to multiply. Means we need to divide that thing so as to convert into the INR. At the end, we always shift to the INR only that we get the accurate major of it. Apart from that, so after collecting this type of data, this is just an example, the sales, right? The similar way, different industry will 
look after the different things. After collecting the data, we need to clean the data. Now, as I told that the first column of the customer, then mobile numbers, then we have something address and the postal code, all we have been captured. But now we all understand that we don't want the, that postal code is not our requirement. We don't need to do anything with that. Even the address part is not so much of important. Even the contact numbers are not so much of important. So what we will do, we will clean up the data, we will transform that data, and we remove that column. So what happens? While refreshing the data, it will optimize the speed. So we get the real-time synapse onto the our speed. Right? <laughs> Next, moving on to the analyzing the data. So after doing the cleanup, we are going to analyze the data. If these things are here, now our CXOs, our directors, our executive, or the our team lead, what they want to look out into the our video. Right. Now director will be looking through the report wholesome. Means he will be looking to the total sales, quantity selling, then the customers, then the resource person, retail, all the things directed. Below that, executives come, CSOs come, they only deal with the sales related data. Below that, the team leaders will be there. They only require their resources that who is working on the whole stuff. So basically, now the report is being divided into the stepwise. There is a formation, there is a hierarchy. So again, what the BI tool predict us is it gives the row level security. That the same report, when it is accessed by the director, he will have the full, he or she will have the full access. The CXO will have only the access that has to be given to him. And the team list will be having the access only to their resource point. So after doing this, we will be moving further with the result that for the director, what we need to be out for the rest of the things, how it will be the function will be. So after this all thing, after the report has been developed, we have developed the dashboard, okay. And then we need to communicate. It doesn't mean that only we will be having a one office, maybe we sometimes become unicorns and we have the multiple scenarios, multiple locations, some of the offices will be in the abroad, some will be in the India, in the different ways. So at that time point of view, how to communicate? Because the data is so precious, it's a, it should be secured in it, right? So, but still we need to share the report to the other field directors, other teammates, right? So at that time, it comes the sharing and collaboration of the report. Again, by mentioning the reports and the dashboard, I would need to explain one more thing here. That dashboard is a single page. Right? Only the first and foremost visual will be there. That is the dashboard. But when we move to the multiple slides in the same scenario, then it becomes a report. Like into the Excel, I, I uh, would say that all have to use the Excel, right? There the sheet one is there. So only sheet one will be if there, it's a dashboard. But if multiple sheets will be there, it's a report. It will be in the detailed part. So in the front, there will be visuals. The next slides will be uh, depicting some of the tables or the various graphs or the prediction models, whatever you do. So in the short, data analysis, step by step. So we have in the first foremost step will be the defining the questionnaire. Second, we will define the measurements and all the things. Third will be cleaning up the data. Fourth will be all whatever the data we have cleaned up, we will analyze them. And lastly, we will develop the dashboard and we will review and interpret with us. Okay, as moving further, I think Krishna has already mentioned all the things related to the why to move to the power BI and why not Excel. Right? Because many of people would suggest that Excel is also giving us the bar charts and the pie charts and all the interpretation values, right? So basically, what I would suggest is, as the, we are moving to the AI world, right? So for that, Power BI is the best. Why Power BI? So first and foremost is the purpose. That in the Excel, we have been limited to the number of columns and number of rows. Where Power BI has no limits. You can have n number of columns and number of rows. Next is the data handling. That again, there comes the number of columns and rows. And after handling the data, while loading the data, 
what happens in the past year there is the refreshment time is very less as compared to the right visualization part in the past year very basic visuals are there only we can say 2d visuals are there in the power bi i would suggest that there are multiple 3d visuals are there even the rovers rolling scroller right in the cricket match while you watching the scoreboard even the scoreboard is maintained by the power bi and the tablet right even the scroller that right? in the sensor you have been seen right so scroller option is also there in the power bi right then the data modeling part Again, data modeling is nothing but the if you have the multiple source uh, data you are fetching. Suppose you are you are doing web scraping, you are doing API, you are fetching from the APIs, you are using the SQL data database, you are doing fetching the data from the Azure SQL. At a time, you can connect all the things single-handedly into the Power BI. Bridge that data with the data modeling, create a relationship. Now, for the relationship, we need just a single call, common column for this, right? If, for example, suppose uh, we are having a superstore and we have been selling the things or the, anything which we are selling to the customer and we have the data, right? So every time, what we depict, if we got an order, we will be having a column with the order ID. So order ID is what? A unique key. Next. In the second, in the same sales table, will again, this is my order table, right? So there is the order ID. In the sales table also, I will mention this customer with this order ID. So in the both the table, what we are getting? Order ID in the common space, right? Yeah. So based on that order ID, we can bifurcate both the table, we can merge the queries, and we can have the merge queries in both the data from the sales table and order table together and we can further manipulate the thing and develop the visual system. Right? Excellent. Yes. But again, it comes with a real time scenario. Right. Because see, uh, you are using a URP model, right? Mm -hmm. You have your SO orders and the VLS orders you have just input. Mm -hmm. At the same time, the Excel is not it. Here the real time scenario is given. That is the okay. Okay, it's interactive at least. <laughs> yeah, if you have any other language barrier, I can be proficient with English, Hindi, Gujarati, Marathi, four languages. So, in between, whatever the thing will be there, right? If you are comfortable with English, I can move on. Hindi, Chayeto, Hindi, Gujarati, whatever you Okay. Now, the comes the scenario with the last one, the integration. Now, integration part is that we, are, we can use into the Excel with the Microsoft apps, right? But here you can see into the Power BI, Azure SQL Server, Dynamics 365, Cloud, on prem ICs, right? Tele ERP, SAS, HANA, and different many other connectors. So almost 92 plus other data sources can be connected over to the Power BI. Right? So if you are any companies using any ERP model, it doesn't matter. We can create the report and the publish it and have the insight to So now let us comprehensively understand the first power BI and then we will move further to develop some of the visuals and the KPIs that how it's going to be. Okay. So first and foremost thing, as we have seen lastly that there are 92 plus over data sources. So this many data sources I have captured in a visual I got. So here you can see through it that the basic files like Excel, CSV, XML, JSON, PDF, and the SharePoint. Various files can be connected. Databases are there. Snowflake and this SQL Server and Azure SQL and various databases are, can be connected. Even the Power Platform can be connected. All the Azure, uh, we can say applications can be connected. And then the online services like Microsoft has, uh, Dynamics uh, is there, Dynamics Enemy is there, 365 Vision Central is there, on premises as well, on cloud is there, Azure DevOps is there. Okay, so this many data sources can be connected. So now we are moving into the Power BI, right? So Power BI, first step will be the data source. Yeah, our data is going to come from right? Next. <coughs> moving with the data transformation. अब हमने डेटा सोर्स तो हमें पता है हमने उसको कनेक्ट कर लिया 
कनेक्ट करने की बात क्या करते हैं टू प्रोसेस आर वन इज कॉल्ड ई टी एल ई स्टैंड फॉर एक्सट्रैक्ट टी स्टैंड फॉर ट्रांसफॉर्म एल स्टैंड फॉर लू सेकेंड अनदर थिंग वी कैन यूज इज ई एल टी जो कि काफी कम बार आया राइट कि हमने एक्सट्रैक्ट कर लिया फिर हम लोड करवा रहे हैं और उसके बाद जाके हम क्या कर रहे हैं ट्रांसफॉर्म कर रहे हैं राइट ओके ग्रेट तो ट्रांसफॉर्म इज नथिंग बट ग्रूमिंग द थिंग राइट हम लोग किसी के मैरिजेस में जाते तो हम अपना ग्रूम अप करते हैं जो एक्स्ट्रा एज अ बॉय एफ आई मैं शेव कर लेना है हेड सेट कर लेना है राइट सो दैट इज सेम इज दैट डेटा ट्रांसफॉर्म इज हियर वी ग्रूम द डेटा राइट नल वैल्यूज है एमटी कई से वैल्यूज है अगर वो न्यूमेरिक वैल्यू है जीरो आ रहा है तो हमको ऐसा लगता है कि नहीं ये इंपॉर्टेंट नहीं है तो वी विल रिमूव दैट रूल बट इफ वी थिंक दैट दिस इज द इंपॉर्टेंट पार्ट देन वी यूज द स्टैटिस्टिकल पोर्शन हियर वी विल बी रिप्लेसिंग दैट वैल्यूज बाय मीन मीडियन एंड मोर एज पर आवर रिक्वायरमेंट आई थिंक दिस बेसिक टर्म मीन मीडियन एंड मोर इज क्लियर फॉर दिस पॉइंट अगर कहीं पे भी कुछ डाउट आता है तो क्रॉस चेकिंग करते रहना कोई राइट Now comes the data model. As Krishna already said into the that slide also for BI and Excel that data modeling and advanced data modeling. So here, as we have mentioned that a particular, I have given an example. Diya tha, order table or sales table. Both ke under a common kya tha order ID, right? So order ID ke basis pe humne table ko kya kya connect. Same way, ab yaha par ek sales wala hai, demo hai jab. उसके साथ हमें क्या क्या जरूरत पड़ सकती है एक डेट का टेबल है जहां पे डेट्स होंगी बिकॉज डेट्स की भी क्या होनी चाहिए एक स्पेसिफिक हमारे पास फॉर्मेट होना चाहिए हमको मंथ वाइज भी फिल्टर करना है हमको क्वार्टर वाइज भी फिल्टर करना है हमको ईयरली बेसिस पर भी फिल्टर करना है हमको वीकली बेसिस पर भी फिल्टर करना है तो एक पूरा एक डेट का टेबल भी बनेगा उसके अलावा सेल्स की आए तो हमें कस्टमर्स की डिटेल्स भी चाहिए उनके नाम चाहिए उनका रीजन चाहिए उनका फोन नंबर कॉन्टेक्ट राइट उनको कितने टाइम में हमने डिलीवरी किया है कितने टाइम कौन से डिलीवरी लेट हुई है ये सारी डिटेल्स हम रखते हैं उसके अलावा सेल्स टेरिटरी अगर हमारे पास सेल्स पर्सन है तो उस पर्सन ने वहां पर कितना वर्कआउट किया है उसका भी एक अलग से हम इन्फॉर्मेशन कैप्चर कर सकते हैं नेक्स्ट इज प्रोडक्ट हमको प्रोडक्ट्स की भी एक अलग से डिटेल बना कर रखनी पड़ेगी कि इलेक्ट्रॉनिक प्रोडक्ट्स है तो वो कितने सेल हुए कहीं पे होम अप्लाइंसेज के प्रोडक्ट्स है वो कितने सेल हुए मोबाइल फोन से वो कितने सेल हुए So we need to uh, develop uh, all the data related to product also. Sales order that he can both analyze that. So that's all. Now, अब जब ये data modeling जब होता है, जब relations tables के अंदर बनते हैं, तो specifically हम लोग ये out दिखाना चाहते हैं, या we would suggest कि there are two kinds of making the relationship in between the tables or in between your data. Right. The first and foremost is the task. The middle one table is the fact table, जिसके पास सारा ही डेटा है डायमेंशन टेबल विल बी द शॉर्ट टेबल विच आर द इम्पॉर्टेंट विच विल बी कंसिस्टिंग ऑफ द इम्पॉर्टेंट डेटा विच नीड्स टू बी मैनिकुलेटेड और ट्रांसफॉर्म और गिविंग द आउटपुट रिलेटेड टू द परसेंटेज प्रॉफिट एंड लॉस एंड वॉट एज राइट सो इट्स ऑल्सो लुकिंग लाइक अट इट हैज अलर पैटर्न Pi and pi corners and points, right? In those in between having the class. Now, what the data is large? So there comes an existence of a snow crest. Hello, middle portion is same. Stars ki matlab hai. लेकिन उसके बाद भी क्या हुआ? उसके सब dimensional tables भी आ गए. So this is called a snow crest. Right. So whenever you design or you develop your ERP system, so we would suggest that from the base level. First, decide that what we need to identify the things, and based on that, design the ERP. So this will be more fruitful into the future work. So this is how this is uh, sampled uh, report dashboard I have written, but it's uh, basically a dashboard. So here also again I want to reflect that in the top most you can see the three lines are there, right? So it's basically depicting some of the things. So what this orange line is, this is the company which wants that they have pre-decided into the fiscal year starting. They have pre-decided that we will we need to do the sales of the 1800 million. So that is the target. Right? 
Next, they have the two parts. They have the order value where they were storing. Other they were storing with the total sales value. Order kitna aa raha hai? Uski bhi value kam ke pas notation hai. Aur usme se phir sale kitna hota jara hai? Uska bhi notation. So basically, again we have depicted two lines. So here blue is the order value. Unke pas order six six sixty one million ka abhi bhi hai. Aur already unhone fifteen seventy six ka sale kar chuke hain. Yeah, this. Right. So this time, if the data will be proper, the mind will be proper. That what we need to do, you will have the proper scenario. Now again, related to the on-time delivery, they have managed that thing in the ERP. That if if my delivery is on time, then give the zero. If my delivery is not on time, then give the one. So based on that, we will have yes or no. So here we can see that okay, seventy nine point forty three percent percent is to me. You get that. Now, so what is my number? We get. कि मैंने टोटल कितने जो है वहां पर डिलीवरी ऑर्डर कर दिए तो 1540 तो विजुअल इज क्लियर कि अगर कोई 11% भी उसको देखेगा तो उसको पता चलेगा कि हां कितने हमने ऑन टाइम डिलीवरी नंबर भी मिल रहा है परसेंटेज भी मिल रहा है एकदम क्लियर हो जाएगा कि हां ये चीज क्यों है सेम विद द मशीन एंड पार्ट पार्ट दे वर टेलिंग के क्या तो उनको पता चल रहा है मशीन में हमने कितना इनकम आ रहा है ओके 1340 मिलियन का हमने सारा कुछ देख लिया क्या हाँ डेटा एनालिसिस होगा क्रिएशन करने हमको यू आई अब क्रिएट होते कहा पावर बी आई डेस्कटॉप माइक्रोसॉफ्ट स्टोर में से आपको मिल जाएगा वहां पे आप सॉरी माइक्रोसॉफ्ट स्टोर में से आपको मिल जाएगा वहां से आप डाउनलोड कर सकते हैं नाउ पावर बी डेस्कटॉप इज अ फ्री ऑफ राइट हियर यू कैन डिजाइन योर विजुअलाइजेशन पार्ट योर डैशबोर्ड योर रिपोर्ट बेस्ड ऑन योर राइट फर्स्ट इंटरफेस यहां पे एकदम व्यूज आपको दिख रहे होंगे यहां पे रेफरेंस है ओके From the files, this are the three tabs. So first tab is the report view here. So यहाँ पे हमें report मिल रहा है. जब आप data को वहाँ पर upload कर दोगे, उसके बाद अगर हमें देखना है कि वो tabular form में क्या-क्या लिखा है, तो हम second पर जाएंगे, right? वहाँ पे लिखा हुआ आता है over करने पर table. हम लोग practical में देखें. The third one is the model. जहाँ पर हमें relationship बनाने हैं table के बीच. और यहां से हमको ये विजुअलाइजेशन पार्ट मिल जाता है कि हमें क्या यूज करना है यहां पे स्टैक बार चार्ट्स है यहां पे नॉर्मल बार चार्ट्स है हिस्टोग्राम है लाइन चार्ट्स है लाइन एंड एरिया चार्ट्स है फनल चार्ट्स है व्हाट एवर द थिंग्स वी प्रिफर कि हां ये मेरे डेटा को अच्छे से रिप्रेजेंट कर सकता है तो हम इसके बेसिस पर हमको ड्रैग एंड ड्रॉप करके उसके अंदर हमें जो है अपने डेटा से जो भी कॉलम्स है उनको भी हम ड्रैग करेंगे वी विल कम टू दैट पार्ट अगेन Now, as I mentioned that develop तो हो गया उसके बाद हमको क्या करना है We need to collaborate with the other thing, other director, other region member. Here comes the part of a power BI search. Now, development is free of cost, but sharing, publishing, and securing our reports and data will charge the miner. Right. So while sharing and publishing this form, you will be needing the license. There are two types of licensing pro and right. Okay. Now again, यहाँ पर benefit क्या होता है? क्यों हमको ये लेना चाहिए while sharing the thing? Now as if I move to the this part, here the field start है where your data is visible. When I open that field, the data will be visible. The whatever the formula you have written will be visible. But in this part, the power BI service it's only giving you the field. अगर कोई भी पर्सन वहां पर अगर वो फिल्टर को भी ओपन करता है तो उसके पास वहां पर सिर्फ और सिर्फ ईयर वाइज या फिर कोई पर्टिकुलर प्रोडक्ट पे फिल्टर बस उतनी ही चीजें उसके पास अवेलेबल होती है इसके अलावा कोई भी डेटा अवेलेबल होगा नहीं अगर जिस आईडी से उसने लॉग इन किया हुआ है उसको जितना एक्सेस हमने देकर रखा है उतनी ही चीजें वो देख पा रहा है उससे एक्स्ट्रा कोई चीज नहीं है The best part from this one, Power BI Mobile. 
आप कहीं पे भी जा रहे हो कुछ इम्पोर्टेंट चीजें हैं अभी जैसे कॉन्फ्रेंस में आ गए जल्दी से अचानक से आना हुआ आप एज ए डायरेक्टर हो एज ए सी एफ हो आपके पास लैपटॉप कह नहीं है बस बिना लैपटॉप के क्या करें बट दिस सेल फोन इज अ डेली जॉब हमारे पॉकेट में रहता है कभी भी किसी का भी कॉल आया अपडेट्स देना है मोबाइल निकाला हमने अपने रिपोर्ट सेट किए एंड वी आर अपडेटेड सो दिस इज फॉर अवर मोबाइल नाउ दिस इज अ जस्ट अ पार्ट ऑफ अ बैक एंड पावर बी आई गेटवे इज द वन थिंग नाउ यहां पर आता है ऑप्टिमाइजेशन प्रॉब्लम कि जितना हम क्लीन अप डेटा यूज करेंगे जितना बेटर हम डेटा मॉडलिंग करेंगे उतना फास्ट पावर बी आई गेटवे उसको रिफ्रेश करेगा उस डेटा को और वो वहां पर अभी रिफ्लेक्ट करने के बाद रियल टाइम सिनेरियो में हमारे पास मोबाइल का या एक्सेसिबल हो ठीक है तो द मोर क्लियर डेटा द मोर बेस्ट डेटा मॉडलिंग द मोर बेस्ट स्कीमा विल बी यूज द बेटर रियल टाइम सिनेरियो नाउ अगेन मूविंग बैकवर्ड मैंने दो लाइसेंस की बात की थी प्रो एंड प्रीमियम तो देर इज अनेरियो ऑफ वॉट है प्रो में अगर कभी आप रिजल्ट बना पब्लिश कर दिया एज अ प्रो डेवलपर दैट विल बी एक्सेसिबल बाय द प्रीमियम पर लेकिन आपके पास प्रीमियम का लाइसेंस है और आप प्रो को वो रिपोर्ट शेयर कर रहे हो तो वो एक्सेसिबल तो प्रीमियम इज द सुप्रीम वाइज लाइक दैट एंड अगेन इन द प्रीमियम यू विल बी गेटिंग फोर्टी एट टाइम अ डे रिफ्रेश टाइम मतलब आपको टाइमर सेट कर देना आपको वहां पर बार बार रिफ्रेश क्लिक करने की जरूरत नहीं आपने एक बार टाइमर सेट कर दिया तो वो उस टाइमिंग पे ऑटो रिफ्रेश करके आपके रिपोर्ट रखेगा ऑटोमेटिक हमने अगर जो भी डैशबोर्ड बना लिया अभी हमारी कंपनी के अंदर सपोज मान लो कि आपकी कोई कंपनी की वेबसाइट है आप चाहते हो कि ये जो डैशबोर्ड है ये सामने क्लाइंट्स को भी दिखे कस्टमर को भी दिखे वाई क्योंकि उनको एक सेंटर ऑफ अट्रैक्शन लगे यस they are developing we are related to the new ai world and ml part we are using right so power bi desktop ke dashboard ka report aap kya kar sakte hai website pe bhi embed it kar sakte hai this feature is also available under the power bi service so this was the basic scenario and drawback ke ha power bi kya data analysis kya so any questions in this part or anything आपके एंड से कुछ आपको ऐसा लगा हो कि डेटा एनालिसिस में और क्या क्या करना चाहिए या आपके और से कोई सजेशन हो कि डेटा एनालिसिस में ये कर सकते Uh, there are few templates. So there is a marketplace available uh, from Microsoft. In mm -hmm. marketplace, there are uh, different apps, uh, Power BI apps, and mm -hmm. uh, plugins. Plugins in terms of visualization plugins. So okay. there are out of box plugins that are available. Mm -hmm. There are free and paid plugins also that are available on marketplace. Apart okay. from that, there are Power BI apps. But as you know, uh, each and every report is connected to a data source. so even if they give that templates to you your data source may be different yeah of course right so it's uh, just that, initial help to start exactly so it it's kind it is kind of a reference that you are the seeking for so that yes. references you can get directly from uh, uh, app source okay so i think uh, he will uh, showcase the app source also there uh, there is a huge list of uh, predefined uh, templates connected to uh, defined data source for example if you want to uh, get tally reports those okay. reports are there on uh, power bi okay. app source So you just need to change the connection string. That's it. Okay. So you can Something also like put that. a tally table. Yeah. Yeah. Power BI. And we will use plugin. Yeah. So for each and every data source, there are different plugins. No. Like I want to connect the Salesforce to Power BI. I have to use a plugin, right? No. No, there is a connector. There is a connector. Very few. Are there? Means Tally mm -hmm. ERC is there, Tally ERC Gold is there, and uh, Sap Analytics. So we uh, basically got. What about Dijon? Dijon, Dijon map. We need to check. But I think uh, I think uh, the next is uh, practical stuff. Right? Yeah. Okay. So let's uh, move on to that, and then uh, we will see in the list of uh, all the available yeah. data sources. <clears throat> now. 
Okay, so I have kept already a green data. If you have, uh, if you want to experience yourself, you can uh, take out your laptops and install Power BI and then do it from outside. Anyways, we'll be sharing this uh, recording so you can take a look at it. So this is now the Okay. So this is Power BI that's all. Right. So <laughs> where we would be designing like this other thing. Now this is the file. We are very very really focused on it's already open. I am just focusing. Now after this, what we do is here we have the option of get data. Right. Now I have already cleaned up the data related to our sales so because it is easy to understand. That's why we have that. Okay, good to move. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so this is we are showcasing that it's all about the data sources that what kind of data sources we can collect. So we have Excel, CLC, XML, JSON, SQL Server, and this is Service Database or Refer Database, IBM. Right? That HANA database, that, that business warehouse application server, and all these things. Uh, can you just type uh, BI? BI. BI. Z -R. Z -R. <coughs> BI. It's not. It's not. So, wait. Is it an online service? Okay. It's a very useful CFSP. I think it's not something that they can do. Okay. So, so if you go to uh, <coughs> uh, let's say, like no, 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 not online services, mm -hmm. uh, just click on others. Yeah. So here you have the option to directly fetch from web or OData feed. So if they provide OData APIs, then you can directly consume the data from OData as well. So there are multiple ways to consume the data. The connectors are such that they are built in directly into the product. So that is the difference between connector and the, the options. So does it replace the data? Same, uh, all the other functionalities are exactly the same. Okay. Uh, it's just the data source is different. So it refreshes based on our needs. So once you consume the data through data feed, you can directly fetch the data from this one and then uh, put it on a schedule. So, uh, just, uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, can you go back, please? So if I'm not sure from which background, but uh, just going to be technical, uh, yeah. there are also other options like ODBC. So if you have any on-premise local uh, databases like uh, old SQL Server and MySQL or whatnot. So all those are also available through ODBC as well. And in order to uh, connect to this uh, via internet, that is uh, what uh, Nan mentioned in this previous slide that is called the Power BI Gateway. That gateway communicates your local data and uh, push the data to internet. Go with the CSC file and you get the action. Now, as I have mentioned, that there are two process ETL, extract the layer, task of the layer, look at the layer, and the layer accept the layer, and the layer of the task. So, as soon as I have connected, it will be displayed like that. That here, all the things are available with the column names and all the things. Okay. So, basically, this is a clean one because. We would uh, having the time scenario concept, so I have already seen that. So let's first remove. First, I will show you that how directly it will move to the transform if I want to do right. So what happens? It move to the uh, page. It's called a Power Query Editor. The page is visible here on the top. 
and it will be giving me showcasing all the things like this that how many valid entries are there if there will be any error or any empty row or the cell will be there all the details will be here on the top and you can easily identify that what are the things is in the error format or where are the null values are there or the empty cells are there. so as it is a clean one so you can see that all the valid 100 percent no errors and no empty cells are there it is detecting the top okay Now suppose this is as a, just for an example, I would like to say that okay, this product container is not an important thing for me. Right? So what we depict in this column is not important for me. So I would be just right clicking it and remove from here. Why doing this thing? Be careful because below that is another option remove other column. What it will do is it will delete other column and it will change this one. So Right. Apart from that, I would also say that as in the Excel, we replace the value, right? Sometimes the uh, name, some capital and caption goes with that. So same option is given here to replace the value. Now, what here it is written as a large box, small box, and the jumbo box or medium box, right? But someone says that we want to turn it out, give it large box as the number one, small as the two, three, and four, and so on. Make it a new money. So we can do that part. Right. So this is called a one of the transformation part. Right. Apart from there, many options are there. Other than when you will be exploring the things, you will get into new tools. Right. Now here again, pivot and unpivot part is also there, like in the Excel you have used. That is not very available. The transformation is basically based on the type of the data. So this data type is text. Mm -hmm. So the transformation is according to the data type. If the uh, column is of decimal or a date, then the transformations would be different. So just uh, can you go to transform uh, the tab transform tab? These are the different uh, data type wise transformations that can be done. Yeah. Yeah, so for can. text column, uh, there is a, these are the different transformations. Just click on that uh, date, that would be more uh, sensible. Uh, date, in date and time column, uh, the date transformation. Oh, talk in detail. Right, 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 right. Date and time. Where you can uh, see this type of uh, if I convert a date column into either a year column or a month column or a quarter column. Okay. Right. So this is the transformation tab which is called as a part by the editor. Right. So after doing all the changes, we will be again here you will come and if you want to apply the changes, then you can apply it. So then apply as soon as we go to this, it will take a few seconds or two minutes, depends on the data, that how much the data is data sizes, and it will load. So here it is showing that 8000 plus books has been added. So basically start from the this scenario only. So here it is the remaining code is there. Second is the table is so as soon as I click on this. So whatever our data is now here, it is available in the table. Like same as the Excel, we can watch out the things like that. Here comes the next model. As we have only the single table, so see, so here otherwise there will be the multiple tables will be there, then related to the model and all that is available. Now again, as I said that uh, this thing has been done, then we will bring towards to the report. Now report you the simple part. Firstly, very basic idea, right? Let us take a chart from the here. If you go over this, all the names will be available. So just add moving with the card with the first and basic thing. What I am doing, I am just
I'm just taking the things here and let us move into the sales part. Or let us say the profit column is there, right? The information is in here. I will just drag this profit to the card. And it is showing me as the 1.5 to direct latest. Here again, the many options are there. Right now, it is a summation, so it says sum, but you can get average, you can get minimum, maximum count, listing count, standard deviation, position, etc. Right, so all the statistical measures will be used. Now, so first one is simple, easy, just drag and drop. Okay, now what happens? Now, into this, the name here mentioned is title is here, sum of profit, how to change that one. So that comes into this third one that is formal. Right. Now what I'm doing is now we have few options are there. Right now title is off. What I will do? I will on this title and I will give a title of this. This is the total. Right. Now again, okay. here you can change the headings and all the things, font, bold, and uh, filter and underline and uh, and make it large. Okay. Yeah. But still, what is happening? We have below sum of properties still there. So what I will do is call out value and here yeah, the category level is on. I will just put it off and the value will be gone. Now it is give us some platform. So basically what we can now say is that our one of the display is red, UI is red, right? And this is all drag and changing. So you can, before you can create it and then later on you can shift according to your right? Now moving on to the other part. Now <laughs> suppose some has said that uh, give me a tabular view also. And just give me the details of the customer name. So we will just drag the first column gets into the customer name. Second, they want to identify that what product category he has taken, he or she has taken. So it's coming. It will automatically fighting, right? Like, like the magnets. It is just putting up towards on to it. Drag and drop. Yeah, just drag and drop and do it. And again, I need to identify the profit. So this visual is also ready. Let us on the visible how it's working actually. Okay. Much more generic right now. So we have first drag customer name. So your customer name is that product category and what profit we have gained from that customer based on that product. So it's easy, tabular view was here. First was the card, second was the tabular view. Right. Okay, now what? If higher authority says to me that give me the top 10 customer by profit, right? So let us select any other uh, graph. We pull by the graph. Pull by? Yeah, let me cluster by. Okay. I have a man set. Okay, fine. So let us take this. And now what I do? Again in the graph, x axis and y axis are right. So let us take the customer name to the y axis and the profit into the x axis. Okay. So here it is. Okay, but what? Now I am having the knee, I am having the bar. But where is the value? So one thing is hovering over it. So here we are getting the value that yeah, this customer has some of profit here about 18 bits, right? This has this, this has this. But what if someone asks me that also display the thing? Means the value should be there, right? Yes. So again, what we need to do is go into a set. So we'll be moving on to the formatting part again. It's coming on to the x axis, so I will go to the x axis. Now, here, 
the display units are there automatically. Even if you want, you can change it to, to the thousand, to the million, whatever values you want. Right? So this all things can be done into the this format section. Okay. Now the bars are there. So that also you can change the color. If I want to the orange, the so whole is orange. Now I have selected categories to all, so it is applying to all. Specifically, if I have to move, then I have to select one by one by one. Right. So now this list is too big. Why it is big? Because we have not applied a filter over it. As I mentioned, that we need only the top okay. So we will be moving to the filters, customers, sum of profit. But on what basis we need? We need on the basis of the profit. So I will again draw, drag this, and put up here. So it will give me the advanced filtering. But I don't want to go with the advanced filtering. I will select the top and top and how many? Then I will give it a 10. Add by value. And apply the So as soon as I have done this part, now let us again go with this. And we were in this part. And let us see now. Six. Now, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine. Only 10 members are there. So, for the 10, we can do now. If the top five will be there, it will be much more easier now. Right? So, these are the basic scenarios. See, now we have this. So, again, first was the card, second was the table view, third was the graphical. Yes. One thing is pending there. Yes. Uh, value label, na? Yeah, value label. Let me go to again that. How can we put that value label there? Now, again, the format. Okay. Here we come to individual. 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 Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, here we go with this. And we will be opening with the Detailing. Detailing. Right? So when you back now available. And as I have formatted into the thousand part, first it was auto. Okay. So I have formatted it to the thousand part. Now it is round offing, round off the numbers or the values, and it is giving the value. But still, if we require that this value is okay, but I need to find the accurate, then hover over it. So it will be giving here it is displaying 12 days, but hover 11, 6. Right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now, one more I think so one, two, three is there. Okay. Let us take an interesting one concept. It is the QA part. And how does it work? Now, what if you have a prepared result, means prepared dashboard and the reports are there? You just don't know what to do with it. Right? Now, in this visual, we will have some by default question or we can also give our prompt out in the QA. Now let's see with the by default one. Right. It should show the maximum profit. It's a by default, a prompt is only that, right? If I click on over it and go with it. So this is returning me a value. So what value it is? It is the maximum profit. Means here individual profits were there, we are getting so. For a customer, somewhere in our data, the maximum profit for a single customer is 27k or something. Right. So it's giving directly me an output. Okay, next. Let us check for the other. Let's make it a that uh, in our data we have the various things, uh, product category. Okay. Let's give an input. Give me. Give me. Pie chart. See now it is suggesting. Okay. On product category. Now it has been there. Okay. So I think there will be some issues. Sometimes it happens. So now we are values. Values are being So yes. values is missing. 
profit also yeah they are selling yeah right so this will be as in we can say it is a minor ai part we can say right nowadays chat gpt and prompting is more obvious to think so this gives us a more visibility with the prompting scenarios and all this also apart from that your prompt it will also again give their own ways also and we can go with that also sometimes it takes the time yeah but this is a good thing this will be surely growing in the future the prompting part the ai part the predicting part right the scenario is like the if there is a scenario of a profitability so we need to depict that in the last five years we are at a profit of 15 percent but what about the next three years so this will be a real life scenario and this will be coming so that we all focus on because the thing behind is that it is also working on to the python script and r scripting also which is connected that part of so models developed there will be effectively working on this part also so soon maybe there will be more many more changes many more updates like in the cars the tesla and all the things right so this is one of another scenario this is you are really testing okay let's check with the another one now we have the region basis so let's see so this with the another thing and the map actually this map we are creating Yes, I will be drag the region in it. And I want to identify based on the So now we can see that I have locations I have given input of the region and in the region I have given the profit. So what happens? There is a change into the this whole stuff in the profit. Now I mean what if I want to do with the format that we can do the bubble size here are all are similar, so it looks like that all having the same regions and same profitability. But we can change it. So anyway, means like the formation part we have done all the formatting in the last step. Similar way we can also do with the other. Or otherwise, I have opened on this category label, so it is showing me the places. And when I move on to the place, it will completely giving me the profit values. Right now, again, these are the simple values. Right. What if we need to identify into the percentage or not? For that, again, a terminology is called DAX. DAX is a short form DAX. It term for the data analytic expression. Right. Where we do the formulation part and the majorly uh, accessing the thing related to our company size and our company response. So this was the basic somewhat ideas and the requirement, which you can create in the practice too, and you can identify that what is the lagging behind in your data or related to the visualization part and how fruitful you can develop your industry's visuals and the analytics part. These are all the out of box. These are all the out of box uh, videos that are available. And if you go over here and click on the get more videos, it will take you to all the market.
These are all the different visuals that are not available out of box. So here you can get free visuals and uh, pay visuals both. So this is a date picker. So instead of uh, getting a slicer for filtering, so filter options basically when you have to select a date or from date to date, there is a uh, I mean there is no out of box uh, uh, visual that is available which you can use, and this is one of the good visuals that is called date picker which gives you exactly something like this and you will just select those dates that you need to filter on it will the data will be filtered from um, in calendar uh, calendar format mm -hmm. exactly mm -hmm. in calendar format so this is not available out of box but you can utilize it. even if it is in, in free version also you can utilize it so these are the different type of uh, visuals the other is uh, The Power BI apps that you are talking about. So these are all the different apps that are available. So service management report, uh, service and uh, executive dashboard. So this is how an executive dashboard can look like. માઇક્રોસોફ્ટ ડાઉનલોડ ધ રિપોર્ટ છે તો કયા યુઝર્સ કેટલું કયું પેજ કેટલી વખત ઓપન કરી રહ્યા છે એ બધું વસ્તુ ઓડિટ લોક્સ ને this can be your references but not sure that would be useful for you or not but you have yeah. to find the right uh, report <clears throat> but you can always uh, filter on based on uh, the industry that you are in so here it has just filter for four star and mm -hmm. you can filter for your industry you can say uh, aviation services like so it will filter out all those reports that are banking related so that will give you some sort of uh, idea mm -hmm. for it and this is uh, again uh, openly available you can go to appsource.microsoft.com and under that you just have to go to apps plus uh, box at home either issues or probably apps so probably apps is where to get list of all the big items now for example here they might have also mentioned that uh, what other data sources are already there so If you are looking for any tele report, you just search for the tele uh, on top, and if there are available reports, uh, then mm -hmm. you can directly get. Oh. So similarly, for example, he mentioned that we have EC Google and other things. Mm -hmm. So they simply have to import this app and start using because it's the same data. Okay, they are using same. They are also using Business Central, and this uh, report is also using Business Central as a data source. So they don't have to do anything else. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Right okay, so any questions, any queries? So what we try to showcase you today is to give you a theoretical knowledge on, I mean, starting blocks to build a report. Yeah. Because without that, if you directly start building report, that would not make any sense, and that would 
uh, put a heavy impact on performance. So that's why we wanted to first address theoretical part that how you should plan your data so that you can build meaningful insights, right? And then the practical part. Now, practical is very, very, very basic because there are lots of features in Power BI. But mm -hmm. just to uh, get you started, we will just showcase you the bare minimum basic features. Right. So if you want detailed uh, uh, sessions, we, we are uh, organizing with GCCI in uh, another sessions also. So in coming sessions, we'll uh, go more deeper into this. Is any kind of tutorials are available? Yeah, tutorials are already there. Okay, same okay. uh, In uh, YouTube also, there is a, a channel for Microsoft. You can directly okay. get from there also. So How is it, is it that to uh, make a hierarchy? You say now you can set the so people can what can see. Yeah. So that so is called is role that? level security. Okay. So role level security is a little bit technical, I would say, because it's uh, I mean it. So you also need to design your uh, data set accordingly. Achha. It's not just about feature. My, I mean uh, role level security is basically. It applies the uh, security on the table level. So, for example, mm -hmm. in a sales table, mm -hmm. if I get access to only uh, West region, West India region, then mm -hmm. I can only see data for West India. If I log in through my ID, I can see data only for West India, mm -hmm. even though the table have all the data. Okay. But I can see only West. Mm -hmm. So that is basically what is called as a role level security RLS, and that is kind of technical, mm -hmm. even much more uh, advanced than the advanced version. So, that would take the, uh, more time. Mm -hmm. All right, any queries? With the nine survey session, we should work with them starting from the question is, but we will do a short of one question. Can you have a little bit of data? For a sales and a purchase is not equal to three years only. But to the question, on a finance market, क्लियर Hello, basically, that is what the question is. Yes. You have to identify, I mean, ask the right question. Tell them, okay, end is this. Do you need to? From management. And after doing one there, and then. Okay, manufacturing sites, my Atlanta KPIs, or issue. I mean, KPI suggests a business catalog. Uh, who example was but uh, what management was they uh, want some better option from your end so I mean, then so if you suggest some better option from your end then it, it will be more easy for us that we will do that way and join your question is type thing okay and you have to do it but I have my name is a challenge this session is for me And if you have some uh, ready templates from other customers on testing mode, then we will get more idea from from, from this source. The name page. So they have a thousand of API. Oh, it's good. <laughs> so what we have done is we have a catalog of all uh, the business processes. Hmm. So the business process can be summarized into 15 different uh, categories. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> so these are the different uh, 15 uh, processes that we have categorized into. Mm -hmm. Acquire to dispose, case to resolution, concept to market, design to retire, focus to plan, 
uh, are to retire is more about HR, inventory to deliver. So we talk about inventory to deliver. Manage, uh, maintain inventory levels. Under maintain inventory levels, these are the different APIs that can be uh, useful for inventory picture, like inventory turnover ratio, daily sales, uh, days sales of inventory ESI, stock out rate, inventory to sales ratio, average, inventory value, lead time, safety stock level, service level, fill rate. These are all the different APIs just for inventory, uh, inventory management. Uh, inventory management. Similarly, uh, plan to produce is uh, production. So mm -hmm. if I go into plan to produce, define production, uh, plan production operations, run production operations. So if I go into run operation, these are the different KPIs that are more relevant towards production. Uh, production output, production cycle time, uh, equipment downtime, uh, OED, uh, production scrap, waste scrape, uh, first pass yield. Labor to labor. So these are all the different KPIs that we can examine. But what are useful to you or what data you have so that this KPIs can be possible, that only you can decide. So for example, even if you want this production line efficiency, but your current system or uh, power BI is not connected to your uh, machine lines, then it will it's not, not pass the data. Yeah, it's not the data is all details from software. Yes, so that is why uh, first ask the right question. Based on that, we'll identify what should be the data source. If the data source is not there, we'll not be able to answer that question. So the data source also has to be there. Then we can think on transforming the data and cleaning the data and then leaving the data. So that is the reason we split it into these two sessions. First is theory, then practical. Of course, let's work on theory part so that you have enough data. Even if you, you come to know that you don't have the data, you show that you can you will start uh, populating the data without data you will not get anything right so yeah. gujarat chamber of commerce and industry grow business transform gujarat